swaffle time! And I even changed the zombies from the last time I did this. Um, hi guys, it's been a quite a bit since I did my last waffle video and that's really for a number of reasons. One, I've been really busy and um, two, I didn't really have anything to waffle about. Um, so first topic on today's waffle video is the GEP uh, KX5 um, and you've probably seen a few videos of this on my channel. I've got to say first off this quad is starting to really irritate me. Um, for a number of reasons. Um, number one reason is I flew it and had quite a few crashes which I'll come on to but they were all in soft grass and this happened which is basically the end of the arm splintered um, and I didn't notice this until the day after but I'm kind of a bit miffed about this because I was flying in an area which is really long tufty grass um, which generally means you, you, you never really break anything. Um, so whether I hit a rock or a stone or something like that, I don't know, but pretty miffed about that. So I've had to kind of glue it um, to give it some protection. But one of the reasons, or I should say, the main reason this quad is beginning to bug me um, is not really, I suspect, anything to do with the frame, and it's more the components. Um, first off, this quad has been an absolute pig to tune. Um, when I first flew it, it was in a really tiny area and the sun was shining in my eyes and I could, all I could really do is just kind of wobble around um, and see if everything worked, which it did. Um, and then over subsequent flights, um, I was getting a lot of kind of, well not odd behaviour, but untuned behaviour. So at the end of the punch out, the quad would sort of drift and roll. Um, when you when you gave it throttle, it would do the whole nodding dog exercise, um, stuff like that really. Um, and I set this up, and what tends to happen when I um, when I build a new quad is I tend to run the beta flight defaults. I tend to drop D down to sort of 20, 22, something like that. But I also tend to increase P by five or six points um, because that tends to give me a relatively okay starting point for tuning um, and I also sort of add in anti-gravity set to three or four and that generally gives me a good starting point the quad will fly okay I might have a few bounce backs because of the low D or, or P um, on a punch out when you drop the throttle I might get a little bit of, of nosing or nose in nose out slight roll um, and those things are all relatively simple to correct on this particular quad it wasn't the case um, in, in the Betaflight OSD you, you annoyingly can't change anti-gravity or if you are I'm not aware of it um, on Betaflight 3.22 or whatever it is we're up to now um, so you're kind of left playing with P, um, I and D so over subsequent flights I sort of kept upping P um, and the reason I did that as opposed to I is quite often people use eye gain as kind of a, a safety blanket and they set it really high and, it, and your quad ends up really stiff and albeit it will it will help with those sort of dips and slight wobbles etc but it doesn't help with the way that the quad flies I like a quad to feel relatively loose in the air but I don't want those characteristics so what you can generally do is increase P and keep increasing P until you start getting really quick oscillations really quick vibrations which is a sign you've gone too high if you get slow ones it tends to mean that you're um, you're too low at least in my opinion um, and over a number of flights I kept cranking up cranking up cranking up cranking up P and I was up to I think about 72 which is incredibly high for anything I've recently flown um, but I still wasn't really getting fast oscillations um, I increased I slightly to about 43 44 um, and at that point the quad started to come alive um, it started to feel more like what I expected it to do given my experience with other quads and particularly the other freestyle frames that I've flown recently the hyper low and the Martian conversions that I did it started to feel like I was in control rather than it was doing whatever it wanted to do um, but I kind of left it there um, I think what I need to do is go back into this and up anti-gravity gain um, possibly to five or six 
and really see where that leaves me before I start increasing I because the more I increase I um, the, the sort of deader the quad will feel, the stiffer it will feel um, and I don't particularly like quads that, um, that fly like that. I suspect that a lot of this behaviour comes down to two things, the malters and more importantly the ESCs. Now a long, 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 long time ago I bought the Racer Star Anniversary Edition 35 amp ESCs and I used them on the original Martian build that I did and I absolutely loved them for whatever they were, 20 quid that I paid for them. The Martian flew absolutely brilliantly and I did a little video on them and, and I had no video noise and I was really chuffed with them but it's as is often the case with racer star stuff or any of the cheap stuff you can buy on Banggood etc. You're sometimes in the hands of the gods um, as to what you get. And while that original one I put in the Martian was brilliant, I'm wondering whether I've got a slightly duff version here and maybe that's why I'm fighting so many, um, so many odd characteristics. Um, you know, maybe I'm completely wrong, maybe it's just the tune is, is, is way out, but in terms of my experience that that's what it feels like. My other irritation is these mortars um, and a few people have commented on previous videos I've made about these. These are the these aren't the latest ones um, these are the original ones the ones that were bought around the time Kebab brought out his, out, out his video saying how good they were and these aren't clones or any of those things that are floating around these are good mortars you can feel the magnets that we've got tight air gaps, they run really really smoothly there's nothing wrong with these motors per se except they don't have a lot of torque for a 2306 and albeit these are a relatively high KV version and maybe you could say that 2400s would be better on a heavy quad like this these, these motors just don't have the torque that you would expect um, in yesterday or the day before I posted a video up of me flying the Hyperlo and the reason why I took that out to fly is when I was flying this I kept crashing coming out of split S's etc and I was I kept sort of foiling myself and hitting the deck um, when I wanted to go really close and the reason for that is um, they, they just don't have the torque or that's what I was feeling so I took the Hyperlo out yesterday and um, took it for a fly and that confirmed uh, my thoughts. The Hyperlow is pretty much gram for gram the same weight as this. The Hyperlow is, is running the 2206 V3 um, RCX motors which in theory put out less thrust although they're still pretty powerful. But they have bags more torque than these do and albeit they're a lower KV on a quad like that on this torque is what you want. It's all very well having super high-end punch but if you can't come out of dives and stop pretty much straight away um, you know it's, it's not particularly a great place to be and what I was finding with with these is that um, you know they were great at flying fast I could shoot up into the sky you know really well but as I said I just couldn't stop and smoothly move forward in a way that I'm used to um, with the quads running the hyperlow motors and this brings me back to a video I did quite a long while ago when I built um, one of the Avant frames um, and I originally built it with the Hyperlo Hyper Lite um, 2 to all fours and I, I thought it was absolutely brilliant, it handled amazingly, it was a slightly lacking top speed. So on a whim I put these motors on it and at, at the time I did the video I said I didn't like that quad with these motors on. I felt the motors were too powerful. Um, you kind of ended up sailing up when you wanted to go straight forward and you were constantly fighting altitude gain. And I'm wondering whether I was wrong in that. And the issue that maybe I was fighting is because these motors don't have a huge amount of torque, your natural tendency when you when you're coming in and you're coming low to the ground and suddenly you, th you, you fool yourself and you think damn I'm going to hit the ground is you automatically give it more beans to try and get yourself out so you don't crash and I wonder thinking back whether it wasn't a case of these motors being too powerful for that particular quad it was perhaps me sort of over exaggerating my movements because I was fighting um, a lack of torque might be wrong but it's just something that crossed my mind um, but either way, there's, these motors have done absolutely fine. You know, as I said, there's, there's tons of speed on them. 
Um, whether or not they're contributing to the nodding behaviour and stuff like that, I don't know. But um, I would say if you've got a set of these, don't put them on a quad as heavy as this. You know, try and find a, a freestyle quad that weighs 300 grams or less um, and uses on that because they're just not up to par on these. And given the RCX motors are cheaper as well, um, they're a way better option. The other thing that's bugging me is when I built this quad it's using um, two TBS components. Uh, one is the Unify, Unify high voltage um, VTX, um, the 800 milliwatt version, not the race one. And the other one is I'm using the um, Triumph antenna, also made by TBS. And I'm getting what can only be said as crap reception um, using these components. And I've done everything I can, I've unlocked the, 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 the higher um, output, you know, I'm having trouble with, um, with, with smart audio on, audio on this, so I need to try a new cable, but I've checked the, the flashes, I've learnt Morse code, it is set up to 800 um, milliwatts or microwatts or whatever you call them, um, but I'm still getting poor reception, much worse reception than I was, than I was getting on for argument's sake, the, the cheap Eosheen TX801 um, with the fat um, cloverleaf antenna on the Martian, way worse. Um, not particularly bad, but just not as good as what I'm used to. So I wonder whether I've either got a dodgy TBS Unify uh, VTX or this antenna is, is pretty crap. Um, so it's another thing that I've been wanting to check out, but just haven't got um, got around to it yet. But all in all, w what I'm left with, given that the arm splintered on the end, I've got pretty crap um, video signal, um, and a quad that's pretty difficult to tune, is it's just one of those situations where I'm kind of annoyed by it. And I suspect none of this is really down to to gap. It's just it's just one of those things. Sometimes it's the way the cookie crumbles. Um, while we're speaking about this, actually, people keep pointing out it's a it's a clone of the um, Tommy's frame from um, Roll to Riot, and I just don't see it. Um, I wasn't particularly familiar with that frame, uh, simply because I don't really like the way it looks. I hate the gold on it, but I kind of checked it out when people kept pointing it out, and I just don't know where you're coming from if you think that Tommy's frame shares the same top-mounted arms but so do a lot of frames, including the two-year-old GEP 210, which this shares quite a lot of its components with, albeit they're more refined here, as someone pointed out. But Tommy's frame has removable arms. It has a mostly um, carbon front end. It has different shaped arms, has different shaped top plate, has different shaped bottom plate. I just don't see where anybody's coming from it, other than the fact that the arms are on the top, I just, I just don't get it. And the reason why I want to point that out is when it comes to clone frames, I'm not particularly fussed. I'd, I happily buy a, a clone. But the one thing that I always try not to do is buy a clone of a frame that's all, only just been released. So when I got my Martian frame, the Martian had been out for years before I bought a Martian frame. And the reason for that is if somebody goes to the effort of um, you know, making a new uh, a new frame, you know, and they're bringing it out. Um, I don't want to steal anybody's thunder by you know buying a knockoff from Banggood or whatever. Um, I wouldn't buy the the knockoff of the Talon. Um, I won't buy the knockoff of the Stingy frame, which is currently on Banggood and actually looks pretty good. But I just won't buy it until those frames have been out you know a long time and they've had you know the 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 designers of, designers of them have had the money's worth and at that point I'm pretty comfortable because I think that keeps those guys honest and keeps the market moving forward. If I thought this was a, a clone of um, the Umagard frame, Tommy's frame, I wouldn't have bought it and that's my, my opinion. So yeah, if you think it's a, a clone of that frame, I don't agree. Um, we'll have to di agree to disagree, but that's my view on it. Um, so let's get this out of the way. Um, the last um, quad on my channel was the RGX, which I wasn't expecting to like. I bought it for parts, but I actually sort of 
fell in love with a little, a little bit and I could see the flaws, I could see the, the, the motor mount was, was pretty narrow, I could see lots of things but I kind of kept going back to the fact that it cost me 16 quid, it had 5mm arms, it was lighter um, and I liked the way that the arms could be changed around and made higher or lower depending on what you, what you want. So I've been playing around with this, I haven't really got so far, I've, got, I've put um, T-Motor F60 Pros on it and I don't even know if these are going to stay on but they, they arrived so I kind of added them in um, just to see what they were um, what they were like and I've also put um, ESCs on each arm and the ESCs that, that are on there currently are the Wraith 32-bit um, BL Heli ones, 25 amp and there's two reasons why they're on there. One, um, I didn't really want to use a 4-in-1 ESC on this particular build because if I was to do that I'd have to raise up the stack and I, in fairness I still might have to but I'd have to raise up the stack and by doing so I'd add on another 5 grams in carbon plus however much the, the bigger, um, bigger bolts weigh and I didn't really want to go down that route and the Wraith ESCs are really really tiny, the 25 amp ones and they fit pretty much perfect in terms of um, these arms without bulking them out um, and losing the benefit of this uh, slimmer design. The, the downside is I don't know if they're going to blow up um, with these motors on or, or any big motor for that matter. Um, 25 amp ESCs, especially ones as, as, as slight as these ones are not my number one choice for uh, motors or a quad like this. So if you're watching this and you're new, don't buy these ESCs and do what I'm doing here. The only reason they're on here is because I have no other use for them at the moment. They were bought um, for a really, really light build. Um, and as technology has kind of moved on a little bit now, um, there's no real reason to buy these ESCs. Um, so my natural tendency would be to kind of not use them but I wanted to build this on the cheap and use existing components um, and I don't know whether these these ESCs are gonna are gonna cope or not um, my worry is they'll fry um, straight away or they'll fry in the first crash when your prop hits something and a, a spike goes through them but I'm hoping and I'm praying that that won't happen and the reason why I hope it won't happen is these ESCs are made by Airbot, Airbot Wraiths and if you notice out there there's a lot of guys out there using the Airbot, what's it called, Asgard which is a 4-in-1 ESC and flight, uh, flight controller built in and the ESCs on that are rated to 24 amps and there's tons of people out there using 2207s etc on those quads albeit they tend to be on pretty lightweight quads and this this isn't so that gives me a little bit of confidence but it's going to be very much a, a suck it in sea exercise at the moment it's got the Matek F405 AIO board which was the board that I initially intended for my Hyperloft frame but I didn't didn't use it in the end um, and I'm hoping that I'm not going to suffer from the the, the twitching etc that's um, plagued a lot of people with this with, with these sort of boards um, I have got as a backup a different flight controller which is the Kakute um, from Holybro and this isn't the all-in-one one but it will take two to six um, S voltage and this is the one with the silly um, sort of foam pad which holds the gyro which should give it um, really good characteristics in the air. The bit that worries me is this horrible ribbon cable but we'll have to wait and see. But anyway I got this because it was on a flash sale on a com um, from a company called Drone Is Life in the UK. Uh, a company I've never used before but it was pretty much half price and the delivery was 99p and I ordered it yesterday and it arrived today so shout out to Drone Is Life. They sometimes, I've noticed them a few times, they sometimes have really good deals on motors and they're also selling the Gep Leopard for 29 quid which is the cheapest I've ever seen it um, if you're interested in those. So anyway shout out to those, delivery was 99p, uh, good value. Um, in terms of this I was thinking about using um, one of these AKK VTXs that seems to be appearing everywhere and these look really really good quality I'm not going to get into the whole race day quads thing I'm aware about aware of that I don't know if I believe it 
Um, but either way, I'm not American and I can't buy from race day quads anyway because um, I'll be hit for import tax. So setting that aside, it looks like a really good VTX. It's got smart audio. You can crank it up to 800 as per the TBS Unify. It comes with one of these lovely MMCX connectors, which are far better than UFL. The one design flaw, and it is a design flaw, is if you put this in, uh, this this particular quad has um, 30.5mm holes in the back, so I kind of thought it'd be easy just to plunk that here. <coughs> but you'll notice that the pigtail either sticks out the back or sticks out the side. So for once, I planned ahead and bought one with a side connector, which is going to sort that out. So that's that. And the final thing is quite a while ago I bought an Axi antenna and it was quite expensive, about 16 quid. And I bought it because it had a UFL connector um, and I wanted to use it on my super light quads. Um, and it worked really well, but it lasted one flight. And the first time I had a particularly bad crash, it basically disintegrated and that was 16 quid down the drain. So on more recent um, so more recently I've started using the Demon RC V antenna which works really really well and doesn't doesn't break but this cropped up on Banggood and I thought I'd have a look at this this is, it's not an Axie it's an Uxie um, so it's just ridiculous but um, this is essentially a little antenna that um, screws directly into the um, into the SMA connector um, for fine one so yeah it basically just screws in directly onto there um, and the only reason I bought this is because A it was dirt cheap and B I really wanted to try it I wonder whether the lack of um, coax on it will um, have an impact on its um, reception but it's really light and I thought it because it, it was only a few quid I thought it might be something um, really just to try because um, I'm certainly not going to be spending another 16 quid plus delivery on uh, another Lumineer Axi. So yeah, so I did support the original, it broke on the first attempt, I did try, sorry, I'm not buying another one. So I bought this instead. Oh and also Tristan, if you're watching this, I did take your advice and raise the back arms up on the uh, RGX um, as per the America. So cheers for that, that was a good idea. Yeah, so this is kind of probably the last waffle video, um, possibly for quite a long time. Um, I've kind of really enjoyed putting up the videos and I've really enjoyed seeing people comment on them um, and agree and disagree. Um, and that's kind of, as, as someone who likes to play around and tinker with different things, I really, really enjoy that. This whole year has really been about me exploring and trying as many different things and learning as many different things as I as I possibly could um, do and I've built a lot of quads um, over that period of time um, and the majority of them I've, I've really liked uh, whether they be three inch four inch or five inch um, I haven't built any smaller ones than that simply because I don't think they're worth the effort effort um, a long time ago I did fly micros and things like that but they're just not really um, really my bag so I've kind of tried everything that I really wanted to try um, and I've kind of almost come to the end of the road in a way. Not in terms of this hobby which I absolutely love um, or the tinkering which I also absolutely love um, but simply in terms of things I can really talk about. Um, you know, I, nothing on this channel is sponsored, I don't get free equipment. Everything that you see on this channel is things that I've chose and bought because they were cheap or I really liked them or you know whatever the reasons are. I, you know, I can't, and I can't do that um, forever simply because it's costing me um, an absolute fortune. And in addition to that I need to stop playing around with multiple different quads and really just co concentrate on improving my flying um, and moving forward. Um, in that and the best way I can do that is really just to stop building and get out there and, and do more flying um, now of course I'm doing this at the wrong time of year you know winter is the is, is the best time to um, to build 
um, but it's also the worst time to tune because when you go flying at this time of year and it's freezing you tend to sort of get out your core you know burn a few batteries and then get back in as quick as you can those lazy days of summer where you you know you took a bag full of batteries and sprawled out and enjoyed the day um, are well and truly over in the UK so so yeah I mean the channel is, is not going to come to an end I'm still going to post my um, flight footage um, there's still probably a couple more videos left to come um, possibly the RGX um, build when I finish that um, and also possibly more on the gap um, as I try and get that um, together and flying exactly as I want it to be um, so there might be update videos on those but in terms of that um, it's really just going to be sort of my own flight footage which really isn't any for anybody it's just for myself um, I like to look back and um, look at the flights the easiest way to do that is to upload them to YouTube so I'm not I'm not sat on gigabytes of, um, of data all the time um, and I find them useful um, I like to edit as well but I find them useful to look at my flights because sometimes you do a flight and you think oh that was really good and then you look at the, the video footage and you can see oscillations or little vibrations or odd little twitches that I sometimes do um, when I'm flying which is nothing to do with a quad but just my own twitchy thumbs um, and they're kind of really useful to iron out and improve your um, flying skill so that's really it really that's that's kind of the, the sum of, of where I am. Um, I'd like to, again just to thank everybody who's subscribed, everybody who's commented, you know, whether they've been good comments or, or bad comments. Um, and more importantly, to the people who've made me laugh, um, you know, this hobby is supposed to be fun. Sometimes it's frustrating, sometimes it's annoying, you know, but it's kind of always, you know, even on the, the worst of days when stuff breaks or you can't get something to work, it's still pretty interesting and I, I really like that I've found that with this hobby. Um, prior to this hobby, I, you know, really my previous experience was racing um, cars and stuff when I was um, a teenager and, you know, nitro things and, and stuff like that. It's really been my brother who's been a long-term hobbyist. Um, and he's the guy who got me into this particular hobby and I've just absolutely fallen in love with it So there's a few people I just want to mention actually really really quickly um, As people that you should probably check out and people who I think are really nice um, uh, Just nice genuine people and also happen to be amazing pilots um, the first one is uh, Raymond FPV um, and a lot of you will probably know him already. He did feature on one of the Rotor Riot um, community videos, and that's where I came upon, upon him. Um, I kind of looked through all the all the videos um, that were featured on Rotor Riot, and Raymond um, was the channel that I subscribed to, the only one that I subscribed to actually from from those videos. Um, and I kind of posted a few things on on his videos. Um, took the mickey a few times about his skateboard and whatever and said he was turning into the drib and anyway he he kindly subscribed to my channel I've got no idea why because he's a guy who has been flying for years and, and has probably forgotten more than I know about quads but the reason why I'm pointing him out is not just because he's a really nice guy and I like his videos but also he's one of those pilots who's incredibly smooth um, and it it looks what he's doing looks deceptively easy but it's not it's incredibly incredibly hard i mean if you look at one of his um, trick videos you kind of go away thinking oh i can do that and then you get to the field and try it 20 times and each time you stuck end up stuck in a tree or in the grass and you think oh actually it's not as easy as it looks um i did point out to him yesterday that there's no such thing as a bad student only a bad teacher um and thankfully he laughs so he's clearly um yeah, as I said, he's just one of the genuine guys, I think, in the hobby. Um, the second person is someone who has a close tie with Raymond FPV. And I think, from what I sort of gather, he's almost um, Raymond FPV's protege, um, which is Galinsky um, FPV. I hope I'm saying these names right. Um, but the reason why I want to point him out is he has a very similar style, style of flying to Raymond. Um, I first noticed him because he had a few really good 
um, video edits. Um, a really good autumn one and a really good night into day one. And I really like that sort of stuff. But more recently he's been doing stuff that really makes me laugh. Um, he's been kind of ma making quads out of really odd things. Um, a clock, a tray all that kind of stuff so I'll put links to these guys in the description um, but watching him and Raymond mess around with that sort of stuff is, is it just really makes me laugh I, I kind of in my head Raymond's kind of like the the sort of dad of the two um, a lot more experienced and kind of rolling his eyes in the background and Glinsky FPV is kind of getting up to naughty things and they're both just having a laugh and you know, that's what really what this hobby's about, um, just having fun, um, loving to fly, getting out there, um, it's a really good thing. Um, another relatively early subscriber to this channel uh, and another really good pilot was um, Denio FPV and again I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing these right but it's another pilot that you should really look at and the reason you should really look at him is he's one of those pilots who's kind of that the pace at which he's improved is incredible and he does some really really nice things in his in his flight videos he has a kind of a way of of yoing really quickly into into moves without really going anywhere and I, I find him fascinating to to watch I wouldn't say he's the best pilot in the entire world or anything like that but I think if you're looking to learn from somebody he's a really good one to to watch and analyze as to what he's doing um, you can pick up far more tricks and and information from someone like that where than you can from watching Mr. Steel, um, whose videos often look like you know someone's basically sent a gop uh, fired a GoPro from a catapult um, and it's spun so many times. Um, and another person um, I just want to mention is is um, Davy Boy who's been probably, I think, my longest subscriber, or at least the longest subscriber um, who regularly posts on this channel. Um, he was a guy who bought my Martian frame off me, um, a Martian that I, I never used. I bought it and then, and then put it on eBay and he bought it. And we've kind of commented on each other's videos um, since then. And that's what I like about this hobby. I'm not, when I, when I subscribe to someone's channel, I'm not really subscribing just because they're a great pilot or just because they do interesting things i'm subscribed you know the world is full of great pilots um, i'm subscribing because i like the person i like the comments they clearly you know that maybe they made me laugh or something like that there's a guy i subscribe to i think splash fpv the sole reason i subscribe to him is i made a comment on rotary and he responded to my comment with a really funny one and i kind of thought that's a that's a funny guy so I subscribed to his channel and I kind of wish there was more of that um, rather than ever, everyone gravitating towards UAV futures or you know Mr. Steel or whatever I think the real the real hobby the real love lies in those channels that you don't really know about the channels that have a few hundred subscribers or a few thousand subscribers and they're the they're the sort of guys who keep a relatively low profile but every now and again drop absolutely pearls of wisdom so it's been a really long video if anybody's um, with me thanks again for um, watching I hope you've enjoyed um, what I've done I've certainly enjoyed making it um, and who knows you know I, I tend to sort of contradict myself a lot so possibly something else will catch my eye and you'll see another build video but I hope you'll stick around um, and, uh, and watch me get better at flying hopefully uh, as I'm watching you Cheers guys, thanks very much, bye.